and we just performed the join and we have this now so you have the five columns from orders and then we got the price column from the product and the name column from the customers now we are only Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This channel, Every Data Science, is all about trying to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions. This video is in continuation of the Advanced SQL 50 series where we are trying to solve 50 advanced SQL problems and topics like select, basic joins, basic aggregate functions, sorting and grouping, advanced select and joins, subqueries, and advanced topics like window functions and common table expressions. In this video, we are going to solve this question called customer order frequency and try to learn from it. So yeah, let's jump right in. So this is the 23rd video of the series called customer order frequency. And if I look at the company, this question has been asked in so Amazon. Let's look at what the question has to say. We are given a table called customers with three different columns, customer ID, name and country. Customer ID is the column with unique values for this table. This table contains information about the customers in the company. We are also given a second table called product. Again, three different columns, product ID, description and price. Product ID is the column with unique values for this table. This table contains information on the products in the company and price is the product cost. We are also given a third table called orders with five different columns, order ID, customer ID, product ID, order date and quantity. Order ID is the column with unique values. This table contains information on customer orders customer id is the id of the customer who bought quantity products with id product id order date is in the format year month date when the order was shipped we are asked to write a solution to report the customer id and customer name of customers who have spent at least hundred dollar in each of june and july of 2020 the order of the result does not matter okay let's go through this example so here we have three different customers four different products and a number of orders let me just drag it to the right okay and what we need is who is a customer who has spent at least hundred dollars in june as well as july of 2020 just by looking at it right so if we look at for customer id 1 right so customer id 1 has bought a product id 10 in june of 2020 the quantity is 1 and product id 10 has a price of 300 so obviously in june this person has spent 300 dollars in july there are two products product id 20 whose value is 10 multiplied by 1 is 10 and then product id 30 whose value is 45 and quantity 2 so 45 into 2 is 90 plus 10 is 100 so customer id 1 has at least spent 100 dollars in both june and july of 2020 and therefore should be in the output similarly we can go ahead and calculate for customer id 2 and 3 and that is what we have in our output so here since we need the customer id and name in the output so obviously since the information is in different tables so the first thing that we should do it we should perform a join of orders table with the customers table to get the name of the customer but we just saw that we also need the price to calculate the total spend so basically what we need to do is we need to join these three tables together so that we have the relevant columns so price from the product table and name from the customers table so that we can go ahead in our calculations so what i'm saying is if i go ahead and start writing this so from this table called orders because we are concerned about the orders and the spend right so from this table called orders if i alias this as o let me go ahead and left join the customers table aliased as c customer id is equal to c dot customer id and then again go ahead and left join the product table so product alias sp on o dot product id uh, is equal to p dot product id okay so once i perform this join we are only required to keep certain columns right so what i am doing is let's say we keep all the columns from the orders table so o dot star and i am only interested in the price column from the product and name column from the customers table so c dot name from the customers table and p dot price column okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output let me just drag it to the left and to above so that this is what we have okay so basically this is what we have order so first five columns coming from the orders table then we have the name of the customers as well and the price this column price as well as the quantity is going to help us calculate the spend name and customer id is what we need in our 
output okay so once we have this then we are only concerned about june and july of 2020 okay let me switch to excel so that i can display the entire flow which is easier to understand so these are the three tables that we have right customers table product table and orders table and we just perform the join and we have this now so you have the five columns from orders and then we got the price column from the product and the name column from the customers now we are only concerned about june and july of 2020 so obviously we can see there is only one row which is not in june or july of 2020 so what we can do is we can use a where clause so where your year can be 2020 and month is in six or seven so what i am doing is from this right we are doing that we are only concerned about those rows where year of the order date right so year of the order date on order date is coming from the orders table so o dot order date is equal to 2020 and month of the order date so o dot order date is in so it should be june or july so is in six or seven remember we have learned about this month function that will it, it will extract the value of month from one to 12 okay now let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output let me just drag it above so here now we have all the rows except the last one right so similarly here we can go and see that this one is not present okay now once we have this then we are only concentrated about the june and july of 2020 then what we can go ahead and do is for every customer id and name we can calculate the in the month of june as well as in the month of july what is the total spend that is we can go ahead and do group by right so if i go ahead and do group by the customer id because customer id is the unique thing right names can be same but customer id is a unique value we should firstly group by customer id and also we need that in our outputs customer id this column customer id is from the orders table right it is not from the customers table remember here if we look at our orders table we have the customer id right okay let me just drag it to the left okay so group by o dot customer id and then name name is coming from the customers table let me just drag it again okay o dot customer id and then c dot name and then also the month part right so month of o dot order date and let me return these three columns in my output so copy this here paste it here return these three columns and then we calculate the sum of the quantity multiplied by price because that is going to give you the spend so sum of quantity is coming from the orders table so o dot quantity multiply it by price is coming from the product table so p dot price and that is going to and let us alias this as spend okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output let me just drag it to the right because we do not need this much space and okay let me see okay so here we have customer id name of the customer and in the months of june and july what were their total spend so let me switch back to excel so now once we grouped by we ignored this one right because we are considering only six and seven months so now this is what we have okay now we are only concerned about hundred dollar or more spend so what we can do is we can even do filtering based on an aggregate so we just calculated this spend quantity right spend is sum of o dot quantity multiplied by p dot price so we can filter this and say that rows like these right so for example this one this is we do not care because anyway the question is asking hundred dollar or more spend so how can we achieve that we have learned that if we want to filter based on a aggregate value we can simply go ahead and do having right so having this is the aggregate that we calculated sum of o dot quantity multiplied by p dot price so here we can say that okay having this is greater than equal to 100 let me go ahead and run this and instead of you know having this let me just alias this as month so that it's easier and let me bring this down so that it's easier for us to read let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output so now what we have is all the customers and their name and in the month of june or july the spend was hundred dollars or more 
Now, just by looking at it, we can see that even though Jonathan and Mustafa had at least $100 spent in month of June, but they do not have any spend in July. So obviously the only person who is spending at least $100 both in June and July is customer ID 1 whose name is Winston. So this entire thing, right? So here if I go back to Excel, so this entire thing can be treated as, an, as a table. And what we can do is from this, we can go ahead and do again group by the customer ID and the name and then keep Keep only those rows where the number of rows is equal to 2 because number of rows is equal to 2 means that the month 6 as well as 7 is present in the output and since we already have taken care that the spend is at least going to be $100 that is going to give you all the customers and their name who have at least $100 spent in as both June as well as July. So what I am saying is this entire thing becomes our table right so entire thing becomes our table and goes into parentheses and let me alias this as table t and what i am doing is from this table t let me group by right so group by the customer id and it should be t dot customer id and t dot name and then return that Right, so return both of these columns. So return t dot customer ID and t dot name because these are the columns we need in our output. If we look at this, our output, so ID and name, and we need to keep only those rows having the count of number of rows equal to two right why we are doing this because just look at for jonathan right so this is what we have ignored already so for jonathan this is the only row that we have so count of jonathan is number of rows is one count of mustafa is again one obviously we do not need these kind of customers in our output so if i go ahead and run this now let me just you know yeah so this is the entire solution let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output let me just drag it above so now this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it so we pass all the test cases so yeah, this is accepted and this is how we do it so yeah even though this says easy but actually it is kind of a lengthy question and just to reiterate what we basically did was we joined this on product id column and the customer id column and then we have the relevant columns and then what we did was we are only concerned about june and july of 2020 so we ignored all the rows which are not of june and july and then what we did was grouped by the customer id as well as the name and multiplied quantity with price to get the spent for a particular month june or july and once we had that then we are only concerned about the spends greater than or equal to hundred dollars and then what we did was we treated this entire thing as a table and then we grouped by customer id and name and had only those customers who have two rows in the table so yeah this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video